Your Story with Melinda Estabrooks, an exclusive presentation of Faith Strong Today. Well, when the pressures of life become overwhelming, we often find ourselves turning to food or shopping or alcohol, one glass of wine and then another and then another, television or whatever our counterfeit might be in search of the relief and release and peace we are longing for. And, and girls and guys, I think you know where I'm going. These choices are not necessarily bad, but the satisfaction is merely temporary. And before we know it, we can find ourselves enslaved by addictive and destructive behaviors. But here is the hope. There is a way out. And my guest and author, Robia Scott, who's with me via Skype from Orange County, California, is going to talk to us today about how true healing and lasting satisfaction can be found only when we learn to transfer our dependence from counterfeit comforts onto our one true comforter, the Holy Spirit. Now, Rabia is a popular speaker, gifted in teaching practical and apl- uh, applicable biblical tools that change lives. She's a professional dancer and actress by trade. And Rabia rocketed to international success at a young age, touring with Prince and guest starring in hit television shows like Beverly Hills 90210 and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She is now, along with her husband James, the founder and senior leaders of Deeper Life Church in Redondo Beach, California. And her and James and her daughter Gemma live in Orange County. Rabia, so wonderful to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Great. Well, let's start right off with your story. Interesting background. Let's talk about your young life, uh, your connection with Prince, uh, being on these shows that as a young girl I used to watch. Mm -hmm. And talk to me about that and then the lead up of when you then found Jesus. Okay. Well, I was that little girl, like so many little girls that danced around the house and put on shows for their family. And, you know, that's just who I was. I was a performer and entertainer. And I think I was about 12 or 13 when I saw the movie Flashdance. Oh, And yes. that was it, girl. That was <laughs> this? It. Like, Sorry, I'm trying to do it on my chair. Oh, I'm trying yeah. to lean back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I went out the next day and I got a huge perm so I could look like Jennifer Beals. Yes, I love Jennifer Beals. Yes. And um, and that was really when I realized that, you know, you could actually dance for a living. Like it could be a career. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I went full force and started taking dance classes after school and got scholarships and decided, hey, I'm going to be a professional dancer. And I did. Um, when I turned 16, I went professional and I got an agent and started auditioning for jobs and, and was doing a lot of music videos because this was the time that MTV was really up and yeah. coming. Yeah. And, uh, and then Prince, I got a call to do a Prince video. He was looking for identical twins and he couldn't find twins, but he saw me and another girl that looked a lot alike. And he said, okay, these are my twins. And it was supposed to be just for one music video. And then we started rehearsing and he saw the chemistry and he decided this was for his album, Diamonds and Pearls. Oh, I remember that album. He he would name the other girl Diamond and me Pearl. (laughs) And then we were off and running for two years with him. Wow. Now, Rabia, just as an aside, working with such an incredible artistic musician, I mean, phenomenal artist. When he did pass away, what what was your thoughts? What were your feelings about that? Because I I mean, I honestly grieved and I don't usually grieve about an artist. And I, for some reason for Prince, I was, I actually grieved his, his death. I was shocked. I was really shocked. It had been a lot of years since I'd been connected Mm -hmm. with him, but when I knew him, he, you know, he always lived a very clean lifestyle. He wasn't like a, you know, rock and roll party, crazy guy. He wanted to make music and that's what he did 24 seven. I mean, he barely slept. He was making music. So when I heard what had happened and, you know, being in pain and then getting onto pain meds, you know, it was just devastating to hear that it, it's such a loss. Yeah, it's such a loss absolutely. of a of a creative, truly genius. And a lot of times we throw that word around, yeah. but he is one who deserves that that adjective and that title because he he really was. What an amazing opportunity for you. I mean, when you think about your life, to say you had that moment to you know, be with Prince and tour with him. It it was at 20 years old. I was traveling around the world. I was dancing in front of 60,000 people on stage. Uh, It was, it was a tremendous opportunity. It was a lot of fun. And then I retired actually after at 22 years old, I retired. You retired at 22. (laughs) I retired because I thought, you know what? That's the pinnacle. I I mean, with Prince, what am I going to do from here? Yeah. So that's when I transitioned into acting and, uh, again, just started uh, pursuing the craft and, uh, audition for different shows, and that's when I got the shows you had mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, 90210, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
et cetera. And it was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer where I actually became a Christian, ironically okay, enough. Okay, that is, that's awesome. You needed to go into that. So you're, you're auditioning or how did that come about where you were like, okay, I think I'm, I need to find Jesus or you found Jesus through, I think a, a woman with a tattoo. Is that right? Yes. Well, what had happened was I've always been a seeker. I've always believed in God. I've always been a seeker of truth. I've Mm. always just, I'm that kind of person who just knew that life was more than just wake up, go to work, go home, go to sleep. I I was searching. Yeah. And even though, you know, I'm the epitome of someone who was living the dream, had it all. uh, But even though all those things were going well for me, I internally was not doing well. You know, I was a chain smoker. I was fearful, anxious. Uh, uncomfortable in my skin and really struggling in the area of food. Mm-hmm. You know, being a woman, I think it goes across the board. Every woman I've ever known has battled in this area with body image, how we look, our weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but then being a dancer and an actress on top of that just exaggerates the issue. Yeah. So I was really struggling. And, and in my heart, I just was longing for freedom. So I was looking and searching. And growing up in Southern California, uh, usually when you're searching for God, what you bump into is the New Age movement. Yeah because that's very prevalent here. So I was doing all of that. I was, you know, meditating and reading self-help books and looking for my, you know, connecting, but I was still chain smoking and I was still in bondage and I wasn't getting free. So a part of me knew really in my heart that once I connected with God in a real way, Mm -hmm. something would shift in my life. So because of that, I was still open and I was seeking and I had people talking to me about Christianity, but I just wasn't sure, you know, Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of representations of Christianity. You know, the new age God is very like, Hey, whatever, anything goes. And I thought the Christian God was very legalistic, Mm -hmm. you know, sinner. Don't do this. Don't do that. Got to wear your hair in a bun. You got to move to Africa and sleep (laughs) on dirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. shoes. I was like, Hey, I'm a girl who likes cute shoes. Oh, and me too. You should see the shoes I'm wearing today. Uh, Hello. (laughs) So... The long story short, God just started doing all these things Mm -hmm. to speak because I said, God, you know, I believe in you, but if Jesus is real, just speak to me. And, and I ran into this girl at an audition. She had, I am tattooed on the back of her neck. And I said, Oh, you know, I was just chatting with her. I said, Oh, I am. Is that, you know, like new age affirmations, you know, I am the light. And she was like, Oh no, no, that's, I am the great. I am of the Bible. She pulls out the Bible. She starts (laughs) ministering to me. She brings me to her African American church in Inglewood thousands of of people, everyone's black except for me. And it was just this radical on fire gospel church. I was like, I like what's going on here. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, long story short, little by little, God started wooing me. And I started, as I was hearing the teaching, I didn't understand it all, but something resonated that this is true. And so at this time I'm on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and I'm starting to grow in God and I'm getting very deep in the things of the spirit. And then I'm going to work and there's all this witchcraft around me. Mm -hmm. And just something in my heart. There was just a transition time. And I really felt like, you know, I've loved acting. I loved being in the entertainment industry, but I started to recognize that God put gifts in me for communication and expression, Mm -hmm. but they were really to be used for his kingdom. Uh, Yeah. So I felt like I was to walk away and I did. I walked away from the entertainment industry and, and went into ministry. What was the response from people when they said, what do you mean you're walking away from the entertainment industry? Like they were pretty shocked because people don't, I guess a lot of people don't do that. You yeah. know, people are striving to get to there. get there. And I, yeah. and I was kind of there doing real well and, uh, and walked away, but I didn't feel, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was a loss because in my heart, I felt like I had achieved a lot of things mm-hmm. and I was just really excited about God. I was excited about, um, you know, when I would pray the things that would come through me. And mm-hmm. I had people say to me, you know, I've never heard anyone pray like that with such authority and such power. And so I just knew that I was connecting really with what I was built and created to do. Beautiful. And now in ministry, I love that. I'm so passionate about mm-hmm. helping believers really connect with what they're called for, yeah. with what they're built to do, because that's when we're living life at the highest level. Yeah. Ruby, what I love about your book and, and here it is here. So for, you know, viewers or even listeners, Ruby has written a book called Counterfeit Comforts, Freedom from the Imposters that Keep You from True Peace, purpose and passion. What I love about this is, so you, you find Jesus, you're like, now I'm a follower of Jesus. I leave the entertainment business and I, and I go in and I start, you know, with ministry and whatnot. But what I love about your authenticity in this, Rabia, is that you go, the addictions and things still followed me. Like, yes, I think did. what I love is that so many times, and we've been taught this, and I've been, as I've been a Christian for a long time, we've said, come to Jesus, Jesus, and then boom, everything's going to be okay. So people come to Jesus and then they sit there and they're like, 
oh, well, it's worse or it's it's the same. And mm-hmm. nothing's changed in this area. And right. you said, if I come to him and I follow him and I, I say the prayer, everything's going to be okay. Well, right. that's not, you know, maybe one or two stories I've heard immediately something miraculously changed. But for many people, those things that held us in bondage followed us through even when we said yes to Jesus. And you right. say that. Let's talk about that because I think for a lot of people, they're like, yes, that's me. What what does that mean? Because I'm I'm conflicted and I'm torn and I feel guilty and shameful because I'm thinking here I'm following you know Jesus and my life is still in bondage. Exactly, exactly. You know when we become a Christian, instantly our spirit is transformed. Mm-hmm. You know now we have a place in heaven with God, but the soul it's still a renewing process mm-hmm. of the mind, will, and emotions. You know, and also when we become a Christian, we now have access to all the promises, to all the blessings from God, but we don't just get them automatically. Right. We actually really have to learn biblical principles and tools to, <clears throat> excuse me, appropriate what is rightfully ours, yeah. but it doesn't just come naturally. If it did, we'd all just be in peace and joy and all that all the time. Right, right. You know, so peace and all those things are available to us, but God teaches us very specifically how to get there. Right. So for me, what happened is right away, I was getting healing in areas, you know, right away, I felt my life changing and, <clears throat> And I was finding freedom, but actually in this area with food, the bondage got worse. And I was battling a little bit, excuse me, I was battling a little bit with um, eating disorders and bulimia, and it actually got worse during that time as a Christian. So I, I said, God, what the heck is going on here? You know, why is this actually getting worse? And and the spirit of God spoke to me and said, you know, in John 10, 10, we have an enemy. And it says very clearly, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And the enemy does that with everybody, no matter what you believe. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy from you. But God spoke to me and he said, you better believe now that you're a Christian, now that I'm setting you on the course of destiny for your life, that the enemy is going to turn up the heat and he's going to find your vulnerabilities and he's going to go after you. So what happened for me and how this book was birthed and more than the book, how, um, how this whole healing Mm -hmm. really and transformation, because that's what I'm about. I don't want to be in church for 10, 20 and 30 years and still be where I was when I started. I expect transformation. I expect it. So I cried out to God and I said, God, what is it? What is this area with food? Why can't I get free? And right away I heard in my spirit, you have too many counterfeit comforts. And I went, you actually heard that counterfeit I, comforts. I, I heard it. I didn't hear an audible voice, but I heard, I heard it, it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard that the phrase counterfeit comforts and I'd never heard anyone preach it. I'd never heard it anywhere. So I knew the spirit was talking to me, especially when right away the Holy spirit took it back to the word, mm. which, you know, you're hearing God when yeah. you go back to the word. So right away, the Lord started putting it together for me. And he said, counterfeit comforts, but the Holy spirit in the Bible is called the comforter. And he showed me that my area with food had nothing to do with food. And that's why when I was trying to deal with my food problem by dieting, by cutting out food groups, by doing all these things superficially, I was never going to have any lasting effect with willpower because willpower couldn't deal with the issue because the issue wasn't food. What God showed me is you're using food as a counterfeit to get comfort because food is actually a symptom. You know, your food problem is actually a symptom or a fruit to an unhealthy root. Oh, So when you learn to deal with these feelings, it's really the why behind the what. Why are you going to overeat? Why are you running to these counterfeits? When emotions come up, when fear, when anxiety, when disappointment, things you don't know how to deal with, and you're so uncomfortable, you're running to alleviate the pain to get comfort to these things. And it's just, and and it's just, and and it gives a a bit of a high temporarily. Temporary satisfaction. Temporary satisfaction. Temporary comfort from a cigarette, from wine, from a sexual encounter. Yeah. But then, then what you're left with after, even after you binge or after you're in any kind of thing like that, it just, it takes more from you than it gives Absolutely, to you. Absolutely. Yeah. So what God showed me is that he said, let me deal with the root. If you will learn how to come to me and get into that intimate place with me, I will teach you how to transfer your dependence from the counterfeit onto mm-hmm. the true comforter. And thus we began this whole process where I learned how to hear from God. He learned how to, um, he connected me with what was really going on within me. 
Um, cause you know, well, we don't really learn how to deal with these kind of things. We definitely don't learn in school. We're Absolutely, not taught how yeah. to really live. Yeah. And even in church often we, you know, sometimes get conceptual teachings like, you know, just abide in the vine sister, or just, you know, surrender it all to Jesus. And, and what does that mean? Practically people are like, well, what, what do you mean by that? Mean? Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, I want to surrender it all. I want to trust in the Lord, but when I'm binging and purging or when I'm, you know, having a drinking a bottle of wine every night, do I just say, you know, uh, I surrender it all? Yeah. Like what are the steps to actually realize what I'm dealing with and what are the steps to really renew my mind and mm. heal my heart and, and change on a soul level? Because what God told me is if you will just deal with the root then the fruit will take care of itself. So you're working yeah. on the fruit. Don't work on the fruit. Yeah. Work on the root and then the byproduct will be different. And that's exactly what happened in my life. And that's exactly what I take people through in this book. Step by step, how to connect with God, how to hear his voice, how to get into that place where he can take you out of whatever you're dealing with and into freedom. It's good. Rabia, now, do you think <clears throat> a lot of people realize or don't realize that when they run to these counterfeit comforts that they know the deeper issue or do they not? You know what I'm saying? Like when you, when we go and say, okay, I'm going to be, you know, addicted to shopping or alcohol or drugs, there's got to be something where we know that we are trying to comfort something that's very painful. Or do some of us not know and we just kind of, we automatically go to it? I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is do we, do most of us know that there's a, a deep issue and we're just I, hiding and, and running away? That's a great question. I think it's really a combination of both. Okay. You know, um, usually when we stop that knee-jerk reaction of running and we actually connect with ourselves, you know, it can be scary to oh, yeah. really connect with what you're feeling with, yeah. what you're dealing with and what you're feeling. And a quote I have in the book is, you have to feel and deal in order to heal. You That's have good. to feel and deal in order to heal. And I know for many of us, uh, we've been through traumatic experiences. You know, a lot of people have been um, sexually abused yeah. in their childhood. And you don't even realize that all these patterns that are now happening in your life in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s can go back to uh, a traumatic event or a divorce mm -hmm. or... Um, um, an abandonment issue with a parent or, you know, just, just those foundational things that we've never really learned how to process. So we're left feeling, um, worthless or shameful or dirty or mm. unloved. So we're literally like the saying goes looking for love in all the wrong places. places. Oh yeah. You know, you know, tell me I'm okay. Let mm. me get successful. Show me I'm enough. Let me have food so I can feel that I'm comforted. You know, mm -hmm. let me have men that are attracted to me and want to be with me physically. So I know that I'm valuable. So I know that I'm beautiful. Yeah. And so God, you know, that's what it really is to know your identity in Christ. And that's yeah. another catchphrase we use in the church, you know, know your identity in Christ. But I'm talking about really knowing mm -hmm. your identity in Christ, mm -hmm. like getting to that place where you have connected so much with love. He is love. Yeah. You've connected so much with that and allowed that love to permeate every wound, every abandonment, every betrayal to the point where it's like, I am so rock solid in who I am that I don't need anything to give me anything. Yeah. All see, of these things are great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And see, and that like, message needs to be, I think, within the church within families needs to be like the cornerstone because I think what we've done is, I mean, we've, we've made it where, you know, life happens. We've, we've used cliches in church about come to Jesus, everything's okay. Yeah. And yet we're not, and this is what's so great about your book and what you're saying is we're not hitting the root of the problem. And the yeah. other thing is, is that for so many of us, we're afraid to look deeper because we're afraid to see what's in us. And to really examine and go there where the hurt is, to actually see the, 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 the really bad choices we've made, and to confront ourselves. I mean, I say this with, you know, when I'm speaking too, it's like the scariest thing is to actually look at yourself and take a pause and say, what needs to change here? And instead, we, we run to what you say, those counterfeit comforts, so we just keep escaping because we don't want to deal with what's here. Yes. And, and, and I think that, you know, what you're saying is, you know, of anyone, the person to go to is God. And you, you know, know, it's so important. He's not going to, I think some of us have, I find this a lot in the body of Christ. We're seeking God and wanting to get closer to him, but deep down, 
there's also a little bit of yes. from blank. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's admitting that to ourselves because many of us have a wrong idea of who God is. Mm-hmm. So we think, oh, you know, I want to be close to God and I want to please him. But if I really let him into me, he's going to shame me. He's going to say, bad Christian, you're mm-hmm. sinning. Yeah. Stop sinning. And that's where that whole religiosity, we need to just move completely away away from that and know the nature of God. And I just want to say to the listeners and the viewers right now, God is never going to shame you. He's there to point out your sin and tell you where you were wrong. See, God goes to the root. He knows for many of us why we reach out and do those sinful behaviors is because of wounds. You know, most of us aren't trying to be willfully disobedient. So God isn't saying bad, bad, disobedient. He Mm -hmm. is not. He's saying, I understand why you're doing those things. So when we can start to have that nature change and and really get a revelation of, of who he is, and we know that it's safe, it's safe to let him into those places. That's when the change can happen because God, he, we, you know, the Holy Spirit will convict us but never condemn us. The Bible's very clear. Condemnation is not from God. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. In your book, you say the only way to get free is to stop, drop, and roll. What do you mean by that? I, I love that. I, why I like is that these kinds of things are things that mentally you can get and remember. And I think that's easy. Instead of these long paragraphs of things that people are like, oh, that's overwhelming. It's those, all those steps, it's too much. This is great. Stop, drop, and roll. Because I can remember that. I've memorized it already, right? Thank you. This, this, this book is about practical, mm-hmm. simple tools in the moment. Yeah. What do I do in yeah. the moment when I'm freaking out? It's great. So God, you know, one of the first things he spoke to me, when, when you hear something like, oh, transfer your dependence from counterfeits to the true comforter, you're like, that sounds great. I'm trying. Right. How the heck do I do that? Yeah. So the Lord started to give me steps. I said, how do I do that, Lord? And again, in my spirit, I was in prayer and I had kind of that vision of, uh, it just dropped in my spirit. I saw myself as a little girl in elementary school, sitting in that attached chair and desk, you know, mm-hmm. and you're sitting there and, and the Lord reminded me of the fire drill video that we all saw. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the, the the school would tell you, you know, if you, uh, during a fire drill, you get up, you you stand at, in a line and you walk out to the grassy area and, you know, it takes you through yeah. the steps. But one of the things that the, the video said, and you'll laugh, we all remember this, it was like, if you happen to catch on fire, don't run. <laughs> right? Remember? Yeah. yeah. If you happen to catch on fire, yeah. don't run. You're like, you um. To, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. You sure. To, you need to stop, drop and roll. So the Lord is so funny. God is funny. He said, look, when you're dealing with all that emotional stuff, it's as if you're on fire and you're running to something to try to quench that fire. But he said, that's the worst thing you can do. So how do you start to transfer your dependence? I want you to learn how to just come to me, break that knee jerk reaction and come to me. And he said, I literally want you to stop, drop and roll. Like when you want to run to something, just, if you can just stop. The first thing is be still. And there's so many scriptures that talk about be still and know that I am God, you know, just try to get into a still place, whether Mm -hmm. you're in your car, whether you can sit on your couch, if you're at work, you can run to the bathroom and just get in a stall and be like, okay, let me just actually identify this answers your question earlier. Let me just identify what I'm even feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even, usually we don't even know. We don't know. Oh, I'm upset or I'm uh, I feel rejected. So now I'm going to binge on ice cream. You know, we don't realize it's not that, that cognizant. Yeah. And what's we interesting, just- Rabia, about that is that we've actually in culture normalized that. Like we've actually even in, in commercials, when we're sad, go get a tub of ice cream. You know what I mean? Like even society with- Society teaches us. Society yes. Society teaches us, alleviate your pain go. as quickly as you can. Absolutely. And how. This will make you happy. This will make you beautiful. This hair commercial will make it shiny yeah. and all of your problems will go I know. Away. And we're surrounded and, by those messages. Yes. It's right there at your fingertips. Yeah. Go get it. Go get it. Yeah. And God said, try to delay that gratification for a moment. Come to me first. And, if, and then he even spoke this to me. I'm going to just get real. He said, come to me first and start to build that habit. And then if it doesn't change, go eat your ice cream or go do whatever. I love you. You don't have to be perfect. Yeah. This is a process. It's a process. You're not going to change overnight. So stop was just stop in your tracks. Mm -hmm. Drop was assume the position, drop to your knees, drop on the couch, drop and just be like, Oh God, help me. And then roll is, uh, roll your cares or cast your cares over to God. And what that part means. And I go into this on my next chapter of the book, which is about being on the floor with God. I talk about on the floor ministry, which for me, 
is that time where I was literally on the floor. I would get on the floor in my living room, you know, arms out like this, but it can be anywhere where you just start to go, okay, God, where am I? What am I feeling? You know, Holy Spirit, be here with me. Help me identify. Help me start to go into myself and actually even recognize what I'm feeling. And this is a beautiful process that you can go into with God Mm -hmm. where he'll start to show you what happened in your day that, that triggered you. And then the Holy Spirit, if you allow him, will go deeper and start to show you really where that started because a lot of things happen in our day and our response is so radical and so deep Mm -hmm. and it really it's not about what just occurred it's really about what just occurred hit a deeper wound yeah you know so someone at work doesn't invite you to lunch and you feel so rejected. rejected yeah there's probably a deeper root of rejection where, you know, a parent maybe favored another sibling or deep, deep roots. And the enemy sets it up that those things keep happening throughout our lives. Mm. So he can just root that in that no one loves you. You're always going to be alone. You're Mm. never going to get free. But once we recognize that, you know, then we can stop trying to look for the right person or the right situation or the right scenario, because that's not going to happen. When we change on the inside, all of a sudden our situations and circumstances and scenarios start to naturally change. Very Powerful. Yeah, it is. Rabia, last thoughts about your hope for this book. So here's the book to our viewers and listeners. Rabia Scott, Counterfeit Comfort, Freedom from the Imposters that Keep You from True Peace, Purpose, and Passion. Last thought on your hope for this and the message um, essentially to the world um, as you as you've wrote this book and as you hope to get this out to as many people as you can. My, what the real essence of this book is getting free, but it's also about connecting with God. And as I've done ministry for years and years now, I find that so many believers, they love God, they go to church, they listen to teaching, but they personally don't know how to hear his voice or to connect with him. So this book is really a tool to put in people's hands. And I've heard from so many people like, wow, this connects the dots. I've heard all these teachings, but I've never known how to apply them. I've never, you know, this just connects the dots. And now I'm actually experiencing God Mm -hmm. and feeling him. And it's so important. That's another area where there's sometimes misconception. We think that hearing from God doesn't really happen anymore today, or that's only for the pastors or the, the, you know, the Christian teachers, Mm -hmm. but the Bible says my sheep hear my voice. So every Christian can connect with God that way. You know, when I heard counterfeit comforts in my spirit, no therapist or person could have told me that and had the same impact as when God yeah. Who knows me told me that. And that's available to everyone that you can get into a place where you can hear his voice and he can talk to you about you. And that is just a beautiful, beautiful walk to have with him. Rabia Scott, amazing. I love your passion and your authenticity <laughs> in this. I Thank think you. more Christians, people who follow Jesus, need to be more vulnerable and open about the process, about Uh-oh, I the lay moment, it out there. Right? I love it. And what I love too, just like, you know, me you know, as we seek him, he will speak. And it, and again, it's not necessarily writing on the wall or this booming Morgan Freeman voice that says, this is what you're going to do. It is the sense that when you're with God and his spirit, it comes, it, it, he will direct and show you and speak. And I love that he gave you that, that phrase, counterfeit comforts. Thank what you. a great yeah. phrase to help us along our journey. So thank you, Rabia, for thank your you. words. Thank you for helping us along our journey. And I think for many of us, this is going to be one of those aha moments where we'll be like, oh, that's why I run to these things. And I need to kind of come back and say, oh, God, you're the comforter. Holy Spirit, you are the true comforter that will help me in these areas of pain and shame and hurt that I need freedom from. Yes. So thank and, you again. And if anyone wants some more information yeah. about me or the book or other teachings, you know, I'd love to connect with people. You can find me on my um, on my webpage, which is rabiaministries.org, okay. or I'm on, uh, you know, Facebook, Rabia Scott, Instagram, all of those places. So people can message me, they can email, um, definitely get the book, which is on all the online retailers, okay. you know, Amazon and every, everywhere you can go online, you can find it. But, um, yeah, I would love to connect with people and just, um, hear, hear the transformation and the testimonies. Beautiful. Well, thank you again, Rubia. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much. All right. Your Story with Melinda Estabrooks. Listen for new episodes every Monday and subscribe to the podcast at faithstrongtoday.com.